Virtual drummer, beat sequencer, loops, smart drums. There's a bunch of great ways to get drums into your GarageBand tracks, but sometimes you want to customize it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can use the drums instrument to record drums into a track in GarageBand. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where I help you create, record and release your best music. And since Virtual Drummer hit GarageBand, I must admit that I've been leaning pretty heavily on Mason, Anders and all my other fantastic drummers there because they usually get a pretty good drum sound with a minimal amount of effort. But sometimes, such as in the track that I'm recording right now, their drum parts just, well, suck. So in this video, I'm going to be diving in and I'm going to be manually recording some drums and showing you the process says I use when I want to actually use the drums instrument here in GarageBand. All right, we're back in GarageBand. Now, if you haven't been keeping up, this is a song that I've been recording and working on here on the channel, and there's some previous videos that you may want to watch first. They'll be linked up the top there or in the description if you like to do things in reverse orders. But here is what we have so far. We've got some drummer track here, and we've got the rest of our instruments. So at the moment, let's come in here to our first chorus. At the moment, our drummer track sounds a bit like this. Don't take all of my time I don't have much left for you so don't so it's not bad, right? It's okay, but something's just not quite sitting there. And no matter how much I come in here and play around with my drummer settings, I can't seem to get it right because drummer is good, but you don't have complete control. So the only way to have complete control is to actually play the drums yourself. So what I've started doing is actually coming here and adding in my own drums. So I've been experimenting with a few drum patterns. And in this video, I'm gonna show you my method and my approach to getting some drums into this GarageBand project. So let's do that now. We're going to delete these ones because we don't need to do that. We've just been playing around with that. And what we'll do is we'll add in. So we'll mute out our drummer track and we'll tap the add button down the bottom here and we'll add in drums. I'm going to tap the acoustic drums and then it'll automatically default to our SoCal drums or at least eventually it will. Which are okay, but are not the sound that I'm going for in this track. So I'm going to tap on the SoCal button there. Now, if you're on the iPhone, you'll tap in the top left and then you'll scroll down and you'll be able to tap it there. But I kind of think the Roots kit is going to be best for this one. So I think it's just got the best kind of overall sound and feel for this song. I can play it a little bit, a little bit uh, softly like this. And I don't know whether to use a, a rim shot or just use a snare. This is where you kind of need some brushes. Like if only we had, you know, you could change up the stick for some brushes here in GarageBand, but we can't do that. So let's do some experimenting and start doing this. So I won't show you as I lay down this whole track because we'll be here for a long time, but let's just work on the start of the song. So the song starts up here. And at the start, we've got kind of no drum sound coming in. And then we have some drums sort of kicking in around about the chorus. Or I might even just have a little sort of hi-hat on the one, two, three, four, five, on the four of each uh, bar. But you'll see what I mean in a minute. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this drum track because I record drums using two tracks. Like almost all the time, whenever I'm recording drums these days, I'll use two tracks. And the reason for that is what I like to do, my method is that I will play a kick and snare pattern, and then also my fills, so my any Tom spill, Tom spills, mm -hmm. yeah, Freudian slip, no, some sort of slip, Tom fills are going to be done. So this means I could, don't have to worry about sort of doing a, like a two-handed, I find it hard to then get back onto that. So what I will do is I'll record the whole way through with kick, snare, or bass drum as we call it, snare and toms and crash, and I'll do all of those first, and then I'll come back and put in any hi-hats and ride cymbals to sort of accentuate the uh, beat. So I do have to be careful because I don't ever want to be doing something where, you know, I'm pretending the drummer has more than two hands. So remember that drummers only have, most drummers only have two hands, drummer from Def Leppard's only got one. Anyway, we're getting off track here. Let's get in and start recording. So I'm going to hit the record button and start playing, and what I'll do, I'll probably put the hi-hat just on this track, just so that I can work out when I'm then going to come in with my my kick drum and my snare. So let's hit record and get started now. I'm going to pop my metronome back on, in fact. And then here's just that, uh, that closed hi-hat on the four beat. Oh, missed one, that's right. 
bit of editing to do afterwards. So there's argument that maybe some drums should come into this bit, but I kind of like it a bit empty. Alright, so I'm not particularly happy with all of that, but that's okay because that's where our editing can come in. So what I probably should have done first is set a few other options here. So if we go into our drummer track, let's just go back to drummer, not drummer, drums, got to get that in my head. Uh, we've got a few options. If we tap on our little mixer, we can go to our track settings. And the first thing I probably should have done is check my velocity sensitivity. So it's medium, which was okay. It just meant that sometimes I was hitting it too, loud, too hard and too soft, but we can go in and edit our velocity in a moment. The other thing I'm going to check here is quantization. So at the moment we've got 16th note quantization. So I just need to work out, so one, two, three. so it's probably going to be 16th note. I'll work out whether it's straight or swing. You'd think I'd know that, but um, what quantization does, if you haven't used this before, is it lines us up on the grid. So a 16th note, it's a little bit weird because this is where quarter note, eighth note, 16th note don't work in 6-8 time. But anyway, it won't get into the music theory nerd stuff, but it just means it's going to have some light um, quantization if I want it to be even less, we can drop it down, but leave it at the 16th note and see what it sounds like. So let's come into a part here now and have a play. We'll just slide this over. Uh, let's come in here to maybe a second chorusy part. Let's have a listen. I know that you're hurting. I hear what you say. So this, I think that's something we can work with. So we may want to, and this is the beauty part, we can now change up the kit. So if we think a different drum kit might work, we can start changing it. So I'll just show you how we can do that real quick. So if we didn't think the roots are sounding right, we can tap on here and we can change it to another kit. So let's say we want to go to the, say, the sunset kit. We'll pop the sunset kit on there. Now if we hit play. And we have different kit pieces, so different kicks, different snares, different cymbals. So, yes, I'll play around with that. I'll leave it at roots for now. But once we've dialed it in, most of your acoustic kits have the same pieces in the same places. Be careful going between acoustic and electronic because sometimes that's not the case. What you think is a snare or a tom turns into a different type of percussion sound. Anyway, let's continue on here. Um, what I now need to do is actually record my ride and my hi-hat track. So now what I could do... I could record that directly over the top of this track. So I could just come in here and depending how we have our recording options set, recording here, with merge recordings on, if I record my hi-hat and my ride cymbal over the top here, it will add it to this track. But I don't want to do that. What I want to do is actually add it to a separate track. It just gives me more control. And when I go in to edit, it makes it easier on the editing side. Plus, if I want to join them together afterwards, I can do that. And I've got another video that shows you how to join two MIDI parts into one MIDI track, which is probably what I'll do at the end once I've done my editing. But let's come in here now because here we've got the little hi-hat hits. So they're already on that part. So what I need to do is when I come down to here, just make sure we're in the right spot. So yeah, so this is where we're going to start it. And if we come into our, into our drums, I think I'm just going to have a bit of a, a light ride cymbal here in this chorus just on like the one and the four. So let's hit record and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so I've experimented a little bit there with with some of the 
the work we're doing there. Now, I've gone with the ride symbol because I thought it sounded better when I first sort of started playing with this, but maybe we switch it up and go with some hi-hats. So let's play on this now. Don't take all of my time. I don't have much left for you. So don't take all of my time. Yeah, it's sounding okay. We'll, we'll play. Um, so if we take the metronome off, that might actually help us. We'll be able to hear it a little bit better. All of my time. I don't have much of it left for you. Yeah, so that's coming together okay. Now, the other things that we can do here. So now that we've got our drums sort of programmed in here, and once again, I won't keep you here the whole time, but we can actually come in here and start editing our drums. So if there are particular drum hits and things, so here we've got a problem. So if you need to know more about MIDI note editing, I've got a heap of videos. I'll link some up there and down in the description as well as at the end so that you can learn a bit more about this. But here you can see all of our different drum sounds. So there's our uh, hi-hat, our closed hi-hat. That's a sort of slightly different sounding closed hi-hat. But what we can do is actually move that and move that so that we've got the right note. So if we play it back now, they're all correct and in the right spot. And because we've got that quantization on, they're lined up there as well. Now, if you want to see what it looks like before we have quantization on, we can actually come back in here. We can go to our our track settings here, quantization, let's turn it off. And now if we double tap in here and we go to our edit, we can actually see that it's going to be not as nice and neat there. So if you want a little bit more of the human feel, you can do that. So you can have it in here. But because my timing is not great, I tend to use at least a little quantization. And again, if you want it to be somewhere in between, you can come in here and quantize and maybe just quantize it down to like a 32nd note instead of a 16th note. And then it won't, it'll still leave some of them a little bit off the grid. It won't line it up quite as much. I'm going to use 16th note because I'm bad with timing. So that is how we do that. Now let's just pretend that we've finished this section now. So say we're completely happy with this whole section. What we could do is we could split these. It's a good idea to start sort of splitting these up because you may want to reuse some of your patterns in later parts of the song. So we can split those there. We can come in here. We can split this so that we've got those two together. Now, I, I said before that we can do that joining together. So to do that, what we can do is we can tap the first one, tap and hold and tap on the second one, tap again, tap again. Yes, we have to tap that many times and we tap on join. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna bring all of those into the first track. So this is what we could do at the end if we wanted to put, bring these two separate tracks back to one. So let's hit play now. Don't take all of my time. I don't have much left for you. And you can see there that it's all there in the same one. We tap and go to edit. All of my time, I don't have much of it left. And you can hear there that we missed a snare hit. So there was something there that wasn't quite right. So where was that part again? I don't have much of it left. So what was this? It was just a really soft snare. So we can go to our velocity. We can turn that up. Let's play it back again. I don't have much of it left. And there you go. We'll hit stop there. Um, so yeah, you can see how quickly we can build this together. We've got complete control over this with our editing. We can bring our two tracks together onto one track that we have there. And you can see there that we've got the, the symbols there as well. So we can start playing with those. So what do you think about this? I'd like a couple of things from you, if you don't mind. Let me know what this sort of drum beat is sounding like. If you think this is fitting in nicely with the song. If you've got ideas about what I should be putting in here. Uh, again, I'm hoping to finish this song in the next couple of days. So yeah, if you can drop the comments down if you're watching this around about this time, which is the 4th of uh, April, then that would be great. And also, if you've got any other questions about creating drums, about editing drums, what I'm going to do now is go away and finish this up. And when you see the next video, I'll give you a quick tour back of this before we do our final mastering and releasing of this track. There you go. These drums are probably not perfect yet, but I think they're sounding much better than those drummer drums we had before. If you do want to learn more about how to program and how to record drums, I've got two more videos linked right down below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping up in the top right there, and I'll see you on the next video.